question that we tend to be discussing with stakeholders is to try and help them understand. When you talk about losses, what are the losses? When you break them down, only 19% of those losses are wage bill. And I was looking at the wages that were circulated yesterday, truly false. That's not what we earn. Those are the wages in the business implementation plan that was approved by cabinet in 2016, December 20th. I beg your pardon, it's not, it's not what you earn? No, that's not what we earn at all. And um, that's what the unfortunate thing is. What was read out yesterday is year five of the business implementation plan. Right now, we are still at year one because we consider that the airline is still young. And I want to clarify something. When you look at the salaries that the staff are earning, we are going through a, a benchmark because there are a lot of them saying, I should be earning this, I should be earning that. So we are going through a review, which the board is looking at, to see what should we be paid based on our profile. By the way, you will be shocked to find out that in aviation, there are very few people with masters, very few people with degrees, first degrees, because IATA does not give degrees. IATA gives certificates and diplomas. So most of the people who are experienced in the airline do not have degrees. It is, that is why you see when the CEO um, see, uh, document that has been raising a lot of uh, Wahala is really not what they were expecting. You have a master's as an additional. You have a first degree as an additional. You'll find that a lot of the staff do not have even first degrees because Ayata does not expect you to have that. It offers certificates and offers diplomas. Now, when you look at the salaries we are earning, they are just 19% of that and moreover that 19 when you add actually 23 because when you add the pilot salaries and you add the staff salaries and you add the mandatory training it brings it up to 23 percent of the loss so 73 77 percent is all the other operating costs you have fuel you have maintenance you have airport um you have airport uh, charges you have catering, there's a lot in that loss. So that what does the airline have to do? We have to manage our costs because the cost of operation is high. And by the way, as we expand, as we expand, the losses will also expand because the Airbus is a totally different operating cost to the CRG. So in terms of time, block hours, flight hours, fuel that you use for the Airbus and the Sierra Jet, those are different. To fly to London, there's a cost. So how do you mitigate that cost? How you sell your ticket, the revenue management on board. That is why when you come, if you buy your ticket today to travel today, the price will be higher. If you, travel, if you buy your ticket today to travel in two weeks, the price will be lower. That is what we call revenue management. So as an airline, what is our focus? Our focus is on the cost. We must manage our cost of operation. So, we mentioned that we are doing a strategic plan. This is a five-year plan. A lot of the things that we are put up that we want to do are spreading over five years. We are not saying that we are going to start an AMO today, ATO today, do a catering unit today, business lounge today. That is, that is um, really out of, of scope. We have a five-year business plan that shows in this year what is the focus based on what the focus is on that year, then that is what we roll out. And we are rolling these things out to help us save. For example, in October, we've de been delayed by a number of months. We should be starting our own self-handling. We're going to save close to 79 billion a year. That's a huge, huge saving. But the cost of setting up is high. It comes in with staffing, it comes in with salaries. I want to say something. When you look at our operations team, when you look at our ground operations, flight operations, flight operations is not only pilots, it includes even staff that work on ground. We have to train them, they have to go through mandatory training. You already raise their bar. Now because you have put them at a level, the our, our airlines around the world will come looking because they have certain mandatory trainings that they are looking for in recruiting. When we were recruiting, 
for self-handling. We put certain parameters of trainings that they should have had. And that, those are the people we picked from the handlers in the airport. Already they came to us because they had that training. Those handlers made them marketable for the airline. Same as us. Once we increase them, you will see a sweeping coming from Middle East, taking ground handling people, taking flight operations. So we are at, at odds to make sure that we keep these people in Uganda. So you can't pay them less than what they'll be earning when they go to the Middle East. So at the end of the day, aviation is different. We can't be looked at like a local organization. The moment we fly out, we become an international organization. And that is something everybody must understand. And maybe finally, what I'll say is I don't earn what was mentioned yesterday. I earn close to 50% less of that. Yes. And by the way, no, I'll not specify, but this is what I want to say. 35% of all those salaries that we earn goes back to government. So we are also taxpayers. When we go to the airport to work, I am not going to work and saying I'm going to splash someone's tax money. No, I'm also a taxpayer. So I go into there knowing that today I'm going to work to contribute to the economy because I'm a taxpayer. And that's what everybody forgets. We're all taxpayers. And for the record, that is not the money we're earning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Everybody, by the way, we're even paid less than the airlines around us. Much, much less. Much less. Much, much less. Thank you. Matters is, do I have the skill? And I do. I can't blame myself for being appointed. That is something that will have to be requested from the board and whoever they were following. Bottom line is, I have what it takes to run this airline. And nobody can take that away from me. It is my gift. I can do it and I'll do it. Not alone, by the way, because I work with a team. And that team in there, combined, we have close to 100 years of experience together. And all of us together have what it takes to run this airline. That's why it hasn't dropped out of the sky. Thank you. Thank you. As to why this airline was created, one of it was to create job opportunities and start the careers for our pilots. One of us who is here, all of them were abroad, and most of them have come back home. And uh, this money that they earn has an impact in the economy. When you check on our expenses, specifically for the financial year we are looking at, 15.2 million US dollars was spent within this economy. That is about 58 billion. All the suppliers that supply the airline, when you look at them, they are profit making. And when we started this business and uh, started working with them, and you could see it even at the airport, around the airport suppliers, there are a lot of indirect jobs that this airline has created, and they keep increasing over time as the business expands. When you check from the tax side, this money that we earn, on average, 35% of it goes back to government as taxes. When you look at the business community, before this year and started, we had a lot of indirect uh, routes to travel from here to Bujumbura, for example, here to Juba and the rest. We did not have direct flights. Now it takes uh, the reasonable time to travel from here to all destinations that the airline travels to. When you look at the cargo exporters, they are very happy with this uh, airline. So in effect, I think in future, probably when we prepare properly, we need to prepare the economic impact and try to use some expertise to quantify it. But I will tell you that the loss in terms of numbers is covered by the macroeconomic impact that the airline has put on this economy. Most of our young people had lost hope in joining the aviation careers. But now all the schools that are operating this, uh, the courses to do with aviation are quite full because they have hope that once they finish their education, they will be absorbed in the national career. Going back to the loss of the current financial year that has created debate, 
you realize because of what has happened in the economy, the biggest cost expenditure in aviation is fuel. And the whole cost structure of an airline, 85% of it is direct operating cost. That means the cost of flying the airplane from point A to point B. Only 15% or less is what we earn, what we pay for rent, which, is, which I would call overhead. So in the last financial year, because of the economic impact that we are all aware about, fuel, which is the major cost line in this business, has increased by more than double. The cost of a litre of fuel in June 2021 was about $0.7 dollars per litre. As we speak today, or as at June, as at June we were at around 1.4, now we are averaging to 1.6, to one, about 1.6, 1.7, aviation fuel. Six one? Dollars. Dollars. Okay. Now, when you look at that, as those costs were imp increasing, all airline carriers have largely kept the ticket prices at where they were when the fuel was 0 0.7. And in this business, you cannot determine your own price. In fact, one thing we should appreciate to this government is that whereas it appears that we are making a loss, which indeed is, we have a huge cost that most airlines bear that we do not have because our biggest asset, which are the aeroplanes, were cash financed. Most airlines, including those that have worked for or audited, have these aeroplanes on lease or on loan. So for us, if we had used the other model that most airlines use, we would be talking about a different picture here. So. There are many factors that have caused this loss, but in a nutshell, like the member asked me, I'm personally comfortable uh, that we are heading towards achieving the main or core objectives as to why this airline was formed. And in line with NB, NDP, is it ND, NDP3, which is to uh, facilitate the interconnectivity of Uganda and the outside world. Honorable Nike Sadai seem convinced. Yeah, Chair, thank you. Uh, um, uh, fin Chief Financier, sorry for a little bit of interruption here. But Chair, to the... As a matter of fact, we have a very big problem. And the taxpayer will still continue to suffer. Because the people who are working in the office, they are even comfortable that making losses is a normal thing. Eh? And it's not making losses today or tomorrow, but continuous. For the last three years, they have been making losses to the extent that the projected loss for this financial year, 2022, 20, uh, 2021, 2022, it's most likely to be around 300 billion. And they are comfortable too. Is that as Uganda Airlines? I've also moved with Uganda Airlines. They have a problem with service delivery. Actually, people are so disappointed with Uganda Airlines. Three is that the incompetency of the staffs we have. I've been checking, when you look at the CEO of Ethiopian Airlines, eh? you cannot compare that CEO to our CEO of Uganda Airlines. It is terrible. She is way below, below, below the standard. So we are continuing with the interactions and investigations. We shall inform the country of our general views that would have come up with. But in actual sense, in conclusion, what I can say is that Uganda Airlines is a rotten entity. Government just came in, put in money, bought the bombardiers, but the people who are supposed to run the sector and deliver to the expectations of taxpayers are doomed. What they are doing, actually they are doing without any heart of government. They do not wish this government or this country a success. They are doing their own things. It is terrible. Actually we need to recommend for a serious overhaul. And you know, 
if you want to fail a business, then you bring your own relatives in business. Because when you look at this board, that's why you have asked for the list of all the staff. We want to internalize those lists and we follow how they get jobs. That is the first thing that we are going to do tomorrow. Otherwise, as a person who knows all these things, this is not business. It is rotten that needs a serious overhaul. And you know people are getting huge salaries, expected salaries, but they are doing nothing. So we shall make recommendations to the appointing authority. We shall make recommendations to relevant ministries, that's Minister of Works and Minister of Finance, for further action. But in actual sense, we are not in business. Uganda Airlines. CEO. Kubanga, what shall you be to Agara or Quate Gere Sobulunji? I did to be a shoe and he beat and bullied up with any Mirunji. So, advert you take a while. Gaba Gala CEO, name adverting Gabaga Mutu, no qualifications. I know Kubanga, I know degree. I think I know a postgraduate. You already say the prescribed diploma of a master's, you watch. Nate, Mutu Gaba Mulimu, I know just degree. Yeah, social works and social administration. So ne tugamba na ye, do actually we chiti. Atenga ba juniors abamuli wansi, abamba inazi masterzi, bichi bichi bwe bicho. So, tula ba ona wo, wali wo buzibo. Then e chila la, losses, Uganda Airlines zeli mukola. Kubanga, umwa kugua so kaba kula loss ya bumbi chukumi mo bidi. Umwa kugua dako, neba kula loss ya bumbi chukumi inkaga munya. Guno umwa kaguno, Bako zelosi ya buwombi bibidi asatu mububidi. Chituti isa muko. You know kubanga? Airlines sujeta gange guanga ituwa chifana nye chiru unji na china ye. You know kula send. So katizino losi zinozo nazo nazo na tuno kweke nenyo vuru unji. Ruwa chichidibu echiti. Bana Uganda bachifuna muu. Echo chikulu. Chikulu. Sichi techimala kufi mbanti tuina airlines zina china ye. Bwebate tambula vuru unji. Awabela we vivuza. Uh, so, question mark says on Yinji, Katsubiri to Jakutuka Kunto Boyen Songazi.